Thank you, Jan. I stumbled into quite a rabbit hole this week when I was looking for the origin and meaning of the phrase, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. <laughs> While many attribute this to Aristotle, it turns out he said something more like this, and I'm quoting here. Concerning the challenge we just faced about how to describe things in numbers and definitions, what is the reason for a unity or oneness? For however many things have a plurality of parts and are not merely a complete aggregate, but instead some kind of a whole beyond its parts, there is some cause of it." End quote. I could go on, <laughs> but suffice it to say, enough others have given meaning to my original quandary that works for the moment, and Aristotle wasn't too far off. It's just a little hard to pull it out of there. There are plenty of other catchy phrases along these lines. Regarding teams, the acronym T-E-A-M, together everyone achieves more. And the saying, there is no I in team. Motivational speakers and inspirational posters abound with such admonitions. We are better together or as the Unitarian Universalist minister and poet, the Reverend Teresa Soto wrote in her poem by the same name, all of us need all of us to make it. Her reference is to all of the various identities we hold, indicating that it takes the coming together of each of our unique beings to get beyond the present binaries that plague our world. I want to talk again today about our shared ministry here at the UU Meeting House, something I have brought before you in the past and continue to talk about because I believe so strongly in the concept. What I believe is that the work of the church is an endeavor shared by its component parts, its members and friends, its different committees and task groups, the professional ministry, the work it does in the world, and that which it carries out in our midst. What I believe is that each of us bears a certain responsibility to the whole, and that when we fulfill that responsibility, the whole of UUMH is better off than any one act alone. It is in the combined acts that it comes to life. Perhaps a word here about the meaning of the word minister. We often think of the person, the noun, and the work they perform as ministry. But there is also a part of the definition that is a verb, which means to give service, care, or aid. When I think of the ministry, this is what I'm talking about. It is service, plain and simple, to one another, to humanity, and to all of creation. So while some folks are called to the ministry as a vocation, all of us are called to serve each other and our world. Each of us has our own talents and gifts, skills we have trained for out of a desire to bring them to fruition, innate qualities, perhaps, that lend themselves to serving in some particular way. If we are lucky, those two tracks have joined on our journey and we are fulfilled in ways we might not otherwise be. Maybe we have lacked nurturance in the gifts we have, and it has taken us longer to figure it out. But they are there, nonetheless. Everyone brings a part of themselves to the table where it is recognized and appreciated 
if we are paying attention well enough. We are each called to examine our personal treasure trove of strengths and abilities and to allow them to be used for the common good. Even though I am the minister, I am not the only one here who has a ministry. I am just a piece of the whole. Shared ministry captures the idea that we are indeed better together and that when we work in concert with one another, the ministry of this place has the potential to move beyond survival to thriving. We say each week that service is our foundation. We are grounded in ministry as a faith community within these walls and beyond. Our reading this morning suggests that it only takes a moment to carry out one of the many tasks that come under the heading of the work of the meeting house. The simplest anyway, and the more complex we devote a little more time to, although in the grand scheme of things, it is still not long. And given the trajectory of our lifetimes, and each of our individual lives and their contributions, we can reshape the world. The big world out there, but the smaller one right here also. Care and connection are one of the obvious ways we minister to one another, but a creative look at what we bring, each of us, points to a much larger picture. Our meditation today reminds us that we wake each day with a set of skills in our pockets and a series of encounters in which to exercise those gifts. How we choose to use what we have makes a difference. And the choice not to use what we have matters also. It says that usually there is a fairly even match between what is needed and the tools necessary to meet those needs. Ours is to figure out how to connect those up. We can spend inordinate amounts of time thinking about how best to make things happen or analyzing cause and effect or we can just get down to business. We do not need to wait until it is perfect to take action. If we do that, we may never get anywhere because perfection is a bit of a dream somewhere over there, one that creates a roadblock to our actual movement. I have thought before that it would be useful to know what all our gifts are here. I know there are many, and I want to engage us now in an exercise to illustrate this point. It is summer. Boy, is it ever summer today, right? It is summer, and I could stand here for a long time talking, or we could have a little fun. We all must have some sense of what our gifts, our talents, and skills must be by this time in our lives. I want to invite you now to open your box <laughs> or get your pencil and paper, if that's what you have, and to spend a few minutes thinking about what your unique gifts are. There is no contribution too small, so let's not waste any time being judgmental with ourselves. There is no such thing as an insignificant gift. What do you love to do? What have you learned in your living that is of use? What are you good at? What does your personality lend itself to? Whatever the answers are to these questions and your own ponderings, I want you to write them down. We'll listen to a little music while we work on this. And when we're done, you can put your paper and pencil back in the box, and I will come around with the basket to collect them. 
and we will share them anonymously with one another. And we'll hear from the folks on Zoom too. So make sure you have your pencil and paper ready. So I'm gonna invite Jaden to just play a little contemplation music for us and we'll work on this together.
like a birthday or something. All right. I'm so excited. Okay. This one says, lending an ear, visiting friends, driving friends, organizing and making lists, herding cats, sometimes, seeing both sides or trying to. Expand the choices you make when you see an opportunity, take it. These are amazing. Be prepared to go further on a project you have taken. Hmm. Listening. Invite company for walks in nature. Share amazing discoveries in nature. I tend to seek a personal connection with those I think are lonely. Love to try thinking out of the box. Share humor with others about things I tend to mess up. Great. Especially that last one. Okay. Now those of you on Zoom, if you're comfortable, you could start typing some of yours in the chat and maybe we will read them from there. Oh, boy, this is a tough one. Not sure if this is a gift, but I've developed a habit or mind that it's more important to help others find theirs, though if it is for me to, I, oh, then if it is for me to identify mine. That's an important skill. I love to share myself with friends. I'm a good listener. I was a really good healthcare professional in my career. I am introspective. <laughs> Volunteering, organizing, appreciating arguments, that's very important. Fixing things. Writing about social problems, discussing them with others, drawing and painting. It looks like it says humans sharing the crucial issues of our times sharing ways to deal with the urgent crisis, crises of our climate. Social consciousness in that one. I am good at organizing. I am strong on social justice. Positive, glass always half full attitude. Empathy. Fix things, see how things fit together. Persistent, never give up. <laughs> Supporting introverts in talking and joining, leading, 
organizing, making art, which can move others sometimes, music, listening and hearing sometimes. It has taken me until my eighth decade to acknowledge some of these strengths. Sometimes it takes us a while. Care for others, understanding, hard work, motivation, love of family, enjoy sunshine, the beach, water, and birds singing. The beauty in our world. I'm almost through these. We have so much going on here. Attempting word puzzles, identifying Broadway tunes, being in the audience, asking nosy questions, listening. Nosy questions prompt one another. Oh my. <laughs> PowerPoint operation and Zoom. Amen. I try to be open-minded, even though it is often a challenge. One more. <laughs> Keeping an eye out for others, especially the less fortunate and elderly. That person's using both sides of their brain. Gifts, commitment, love of children, good at listening, compassionate, interest in learning new things, curious, and a love of nature. Make people laugh taking care of people, getting things done, being a friend, sister, daughter that can be counted on, reliability. I didn't think there were that many of you here. My working life as a volunteer and a professional was to sustain the democracies of small Massachusetts towns by Mm, equalizing their financial resources. Very important. My personal motto, to harm no one. But I did hurt some people emotionally. We all have our moments. Volunteer service to community, organization, leadership, donating my professional skills as a physician in my retirement, my interests, golf, music, reading, and discussing what was read. Love to garden, ride bikes, play my violin, listen to classical music, help people, sing, help in the community by doing community service projects, read and participate in discussions about what was read, gather in groups with like-minded and also people with whom I don't agree, work towards making the world a better place, support the work of organizations and political leaders with whom I share agreement. Challenges there. One more. <laughs> Cr 
creative, helping others, willing to cooperate in working in a group, trying to be a good listener. I am a UU and try to live by its principles. Very important. So, are you on Zoom ready to share? There's some in the chat. Do you want to um, do you want to take the microphone and just read what they are? You don't have to say who they are. Where is the microphone? <laughs> there we go. Caring and giving. Another person is compassion, generosity, amplifying others' attributes, sharing the gift of song, listening, learning from this wonderful community what to do about the frightening state of our world, and sharing what I learn in the outer world, taking actions once I learn the actions to take, mm -hmm. offering this community to others who may benefit and resonate with it, play the piano, donate clothes and goods, offer compositions both classical and songs, bring joy through various kinds of performances, minds and others, presence showing up, mm. would like to help broaden membership, yeah. <laughs> taking part in discussions, video editing and recording, extend warmth and caring to everyone and to every living creature, Mm. Volunteering. Thank you. Those are beautiful. Is there, is there anyone on Zoom who didn't put something in the chat but that wants to share? You could raise your hand and we will look for you. Um, Joan? Of course yeah, I still can't chat. <laughs> you're going to be revealed, of course. <laughs> sorry. It's terrible. I, I said uh, dance. Sing, read, discuss, and share. Very nice. Dance, I like that. Anyone else? I'm scrolling. I don't see any other hands. Whew. <laughs> All right. This is pretty incredible. So may all of these gifts and those we have yet to discover be blessed and be a blessing in our midst. So I want to just say that here's the thing. We're getting ready to think about the future of the meeting house here in Chatham. A deeper dive into those ideas is forthcoming in August and into the fall. But I, want us, I wanted us to have a sense of some of what we have here. And it's incredible, right? It never ceases to amaze me, the number and variety of gifts that exist in such a space as this. And maybe there are things we find we need and we'll have to look for those as we move ahead. But we have an idea. And I wanted also to remind us that the future of the Meeting House belongs to all of us. Its success is not just the minister's job. In fact, this is less the case than for those who are members. Ministers come and go, but you will all remain. Together we can envision and build a future that is sustainable. That is what shared ministry is all about. All of us working together toward a common goal, aligned with our values and our mission. What that looks like remains to be seen. But for now, we know some of what we have to work with, what tools we can count on as we make a plan. We are in a unique and sacred relationship here by virtue of the values and principles that bind us. We share in service to one another and to our world. We share in ministry together. So may it be, and amen.
Thank you, Tracy. So we have come to the time in our service when we ask for your contribution to help and sustain our meeting house. Whether you are in our beautiful building or with us online on Zoom, our ongoing fellowship and organization continues and we appreciate your support. As we will pass the basket for our offering, please remember that there is also a separate basket at the back of the meeting house where you may contribute to our monthly community outreach. This is a good time to get that contribution ready to be placed in the basket as you go. We also have a donate button on our website for several different types of offerings. And of course, you may also mail a check to the meeting house. The address is also on the screen. Whichever you choose and however it arrives, we are grateful for your generosity. And now let there be an offering to strengthen and sustain this space, this community of memory and of hope, for we are the keepers of the dream. <laughs> 